Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Devotions with David. We're continuing our topic today about depression, suicide, and then today hearing God's voice, which is so important. When you're down, depressed, feel hopeless, you need to hear from God. And that was the case with Elijah. So take out your Bibles and turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. We'll continue with what we were looking at yesterday. And it's a very important topic, a very sobering topic. I shared a few days ago that felt led to do this because of a pretty um, vivid dream that I had a couple nights ago. And we talked about Paul in 2 Corinthians 1, despaired even of life. Here in 1 Kings 19, Elijah is wanting to end his life because he's fearful and depressed and he's believing lies, which is very important in handling depression and suicide is to identify things you're believing that are not in line with the truth of God's word. We need to hear from God. David was often struggling in the Psalms. People like Charles Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers ever, struggled with depression a lot of his life. St. John of the Cross in the 16th century wrote The Dark Night of the Soul. And so the first thing that we've wanted to say throughout this is that um, dealing with depression, even suicidal thoughts, um, can come to some of the most godly of people. It can be a demonic attack. It can be a way the enemy's trying to take you out. But uh, we know that the enemy's behind a lot of it because of John 10, 10. The thief, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. So it's the plan and the will of God that you have a meaningful, abundant life. That doesn't mean it's going to be problem-free and challenge-free. We know from many scriptures that that's not the case. But we certainly know that Jesus wants us to have an abundant life, full of meaning, full of purpose, full of mission. And um, we know from the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, that when we abide in Christ and we allow the inward power of the Spirit to to, uh, empower us and and control us and influence us, what are the fruits of that? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So those go contrary to depression and suicide for sure. Well, in 1 Kings chapter 19, Uh, We talked yesterday about Elijah had experienced this amazing manifestation of the power of God in in the previous chapter. Then Jezebel threatens him, and in verse 3, he was afraid. He arose and ran for his life, came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, left his servant there, 1 Kings 19, 4. He himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he asked that he might die saying, It is enough now, Lord. O Lord, take away my life, for I'm no longer, I'm no better than my father's. So here we see Elijah having suicidal thoughts. And if that's your struggle today, take comfort that this is a very godly man who had those same struggles. But don't give in to those thoughts. Don't do what those thoughts are telling you to do. They're lies from the enemy or from your flesh. And you need to learn the principles that we're going to see here about getting victory over that. So we, learned, we saw yesterday that the angel of the Lord comes to Elijah and says, eat. And so the first thing is give attention to your physical health. There can be physical issues behind that depression. Sometimes we over-spiritualize. And sometimes, you know, I love how God's Word just gives practical advice. The angel didn't come and give him a lecture in, in psychosomatic or whatever, psychodynamics. He, he first just came and said, here, take and eat. You're weak. Your body's worn down. That's behind some of your... Uh, feeling depressed and and having these thoughts, it's it's there's a physical issue here, and so uh, get a physical, get uh, get the physical care you need. Now we're going to move to verse nine. Then he came to a cave and lodged in it, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. Here we go. We need to hear from God, and he speaks in many ways. We'll talk about that. Word of the Lord came to him and said to him, "What are you doing here, Elijah?" <laughs> He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. And this is key right here. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. First of all, 
they uh, weren't seeking to take his life. It was just one, Jezebel. Furthermore, he says, I'm the only, basically, I'm the only one who's really serving you faithfully, God. And we're going to see later in this chapter that was not the case. So he's believing lies about himself and his situation that he needs to have corrected. Verse 11, God said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. I think there's a little key treasure, a little hidden treasure here, hidden manna. Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Get outside. Y'all know I love the outdoors. I am outside as much as I can. I have a place I go prepare my sermons, sit by a creek here near my house. Um, if I can be outside over inside, I prefer it all the time, even if, it's, even if the weather's a little weird. I just think there's something powerful about being in nature. Um, it, 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 first of all, it, it gives your body vitamin D from the sunshine. So I think there's a, there's, a, there's a real important point here when God just says, hey, get out of the cave. He had been in the cave and, uh, and, and get outside, especially during this COVID-19 deal. Don't stay in your house all the time. That's depressing right there, looking at the same four walls. Uh, regardless of where you live, get outside and see the beauty of God's creation. Here in Georgia today, we're going to have a near perfect day, high of 68, sunshine, no humidity. And behold, the Lord passed by, now this is interesting, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. All right. This is so interesting, and you may differ with me. That's okay. The Lord was not in the wind. Well, the Lord was in the wind. He made the wind blow, so he's manifesting his presence. But here's the deal. I believe it was like the Logos word versus the Rhema word. The Logos word is the general word of the Lord. It applies to everybody. The Rhema word is that specific word when God really speaks to your heart in what you need to hear. So I believe this teaches... We, we need the Logos word and we need the Rhema word. And the fact that, that it says the Lord passed by, so God was present in all this, but when it says the Lord was not in the wind, it meant that's not where his specific word was for Elijah, but he was still behind all this because we know that he's behind all of nature. And after the wind, an earthquake. Okay, who caused the earthquake? God did, but then it says, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. He wasn't speaking specific in the earthquake to Elijah, but I think he was speaking general in the earthquake after the earthquake of fire. This reminds me of the, the pop group of the earth, wind, and fire. Maybe their name comes from this passage. I don't know. But we have earthquake, we have wind, and we have fire. And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Now, this is one of those phrases you come to and you say, you know what, I want to know what this really means in the Hebrew. Or maybe you go to your Blue Letter Bible app, tap on the verse, go to Interlinear, look at the original Hebrew. Also, I love to do a, a, compare, a translation comparison. And so I'll give you what some of the other translations say on this. Low whisper, gentle whisper, King James, still small voice, gentle blowing, soft whisper, soft gentle voice. Bottom line with all of this, it, it literally was just a, a quiet or whisper, um, gentle, and uh, that's where we get still small voice, but the low whisper is a very good translation, the ESV here. The bottom line is it was, it was not as flamboyant as the wind, earthquake, and fire. Those things do show the presence of God, the power of God, the purification of God. So I think there's, there's something really in the wind, earthquake, and fire here. But that, that specific voice, word, rhema, that Elijah needed to hear was going to come in a low whisper. Well, what do you have to do to hear someone whisper? I'm whispering right now. And so what is it causing some of you to do? You're maybe having to turn the volume up on your phone or your computer. Maybe you're leaning in. All right, here's what I think. When there's a low whisper, it's, it's to get us to lean in, to get us to really come close to the heart of God, the breast of God, the, the passion of God. This is where you've got to press in 
get quiet to hear it and and lean in. You've got to, this is the hardest part when you're in depression or when you're having suicidal thoughts or when you're just downcast and you feel the dark night of the soul. Often the motivation is low and so you just want to retreat. You want to throw in the towel. You want to just veg out. You want to entertain yourself to death or you want to drink or take drugs or or other things to kind of alter your emotions that's what you've got to resist the enemy wants you to disengage god wants you to engage so you've got to really lean in spend extra time in the word listening to his spirit listening to his voice getting godly counsel from others reading good material listening to worship music and, and but, but the book, the book is the most important. This is the primary way God speaks. Not the only way he speaks, but it's the primary way he speaks. Verse 13, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, went out, stood at the entrance of the cave, and behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So he repeated just what we saw earlier. And the Lord said to him, so now he's hearing that still small voice, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you will anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abdu'l-Mahulah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. What is God doing here? He's giving him practical advice to get other people to help him. First, he gave practical advice to take care of his physical body by eating. Second, he gives him a specific word, a rhema word. And here he's saying, get other people to take some of the load off of you. You're taking on too much. And so I think there's such practical advice given here. And then he's replacing the lie that he was believing, that he was the only one being faithful to God, not true. He says, look, I've got 7,000 in Israel who've not bowed the knee. You're not alone. I've got an army of people. It's not just you that's being faithful to me. And so there's so much here for us to learn. When we're depressed, when we're believing lies, when we're struggling, we need to, to take care of our bodies. We need to get outside. We need to hear the voice of God. We need to have other people help us. And we need to replace lies with truth. Now in my book, Well Done, I have a chapter. Actually, it's the first chapter on well done and hearing God because I believe hearing God's voice is so important. And I want to end today with just a few of the things that I mentioned in here, that God speaks primarily through His written Word, the Bible. He also speaks through His creation. He speaks through impressions of the Holy Spirit, but we always filter those through Scripture. This is the illustration of the window and the screen. We want to live with an open window, allowing the fresh wind of the Spirit to blow, open to dreams, visions, prophecies, different ways that God speaks. But we filter it all. We need a good screen on our window. We filter it all through the written Word of God because He'll never speak in a way contrary to His Word and to His character. And he speaks through to us through other people. He speaks through our emotions, our circumstances. He speaks through signs and he speaks through our pain. And then I talk about practical guidance. Be in the Bible daily. Make prayer a two-way conversation. So you talk to God and then you just be quiet and you write down what you sense him saying. And again, you filter that through scripture. Bounce it off of other people if you're unsure. I talk about... Um, be receptive to dreams and visions of continue to walk close with God. Be open to people giving you prophetic words. And then I talk about the Proverbs challenge. And I, and I talk about just that inner 
voice of the Holy Spirit, where as you're about your day and you're communing with God and you're abiding in Him, be open to Him bringing thoughts to your mind and impressions of just maybe whispering to you His love, His care, His encouragement, hope, because John 10 says, my sheep will hear my voice. You can hear the voice of God. Again, He speaks primarily through the Scriptures, but He speaks in so many other ways also, always in alignment with His Word. So I hope this example today from Elijah is encouraging to you, encourage you to make comments below, email me questions, davidholt08 at gmail.com. If you need a prayer appointment with somebody, we can line that up through Living Hope Church. And for the Living Hope Church family, let me just once again say we are giving a lot of prayer and thought to when we would reopen our services. We're not going to be in any hurry to do that because we want to make sure that everybody's safety is the number one concern. So till further notified, live stream only, 11 a.m. Sunday. We're going to be in Romans chapter 10 talking about that beautiful balance between the sovereignty of God and the human responsibility of man. They're not mutually exclusive. Romans 9, Calvinism, Romans 10, Arminianism. That's why I'm a Calminian. And so we'll be talking about our role in salvation on Sunday from Romans chapter 10. So I encourage you today to really dig into God's Word, get outside in His creation, ask Him to speak to you, and if you're particularly struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts, make sure you reach out to somebody for help, and I'd be willing to be that person. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank You for the, the amazing practicality of Your Word. Thank You that um, we have so many examples of people who struggled, and they weren't always on top of the mountain giving praise to you that many times they were in the valley of the shadow of death, but they feared no evil because you are with us. And we thank you and praise you that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. I pray today for anybody who's not saved that today would be the day of salvation, that you would grant them repentance and faith. For your people who are listening today, God, I pray encouragement. I pray hope. I pray that uh, you will defeat in their lives any temptations or lies or of negative emotions that are trying to rob them of the abundant life that you've promised. And I pray the release of your Holy Spirit in their lives because your Holy Spirit lives in us, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Would you just erupt in people your mighty power to give them a, a, an abundant life and that they would bear fruit for your glory. And God, today we pray throughout America, throughout the world, that you would bring a spiritual revival through this coronavirus, that you would awaken the nations, that we would repent of our idols, and that we would love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name, amen.